Welcome to the Reiki Business Collective, where Reiki business owners come together to share information, support one another, and serve the world. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, interviewing and inviting Reiki business owners to join the conversation in the Reiki Business Collective Facebook group. Thank you. Welcome to Reiki Business Collective. We are speaking in this episode with Christine Renee. Christine Renee is a Reiki master teacher, shamanic practitioner, Reiki business consultant, and chakra clairvoyant coach in Bozeman, Montana. With 18 years of experience as a Reiki master, she has had success both with her in-person practice and online school, ReikiCafeUniversity.com where she mentors Reiki practitioners and spiritual entrepreneurs and has a community of more than 5,000 followers. Christine, welcome to Reiki Business Collective. Such an honor to have you here. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited to be here and to talk with you, Christian. This is going to be a, a lovely conversation. I'm really excited. Great. Thank you so much. So please just start off by telling us a little bit about your business. We would we would love to hear about uh, what you do. Absolutely. So before the pandemic, I was a full-time Reiki practitioner with a brick and mortar. So I had 15 to 20 clients a week. I had the classes happening every month. I had two apprentices full-time. I had your you know, your ideal brick and mortar business, um, what, what Reiki practitioners really are striving for, what they see as a full-time Reiki business. I had created that. And it took me a few years to get to that point of success, of busyness, of consistency and reliability and all of those things. And I had already been starting to build online and b bring my platform more online because I wanted to serve more than just my local community. I was really hoping that my apprentices would then take over my brick and mortar and I would be moving into the online space with the primary objective to help other Reiki practitioners learn how to build their businesses. That was, that was what I was going to do. I'm like, okay, I've done it. People want to know how to do it. I can teach them. And that was kind of what I thought. And then the pandemic hit. And so the business had to close. We had a hard lockdown here in Bozeman, Montana, as did everywhere else in the world. And I, but I was ahead of the game in the fact that I had already been building out a teaching platform online and a website online. And it was getting completed at the same time as lockdown hit. So when the lockdown hit, I already had an online school with courses on it that I had created. And so I had a little bit of a head start, if you will, and um, had already was growing my Reiki Cafe community, my Facebook group. Um, you know, I opened that back in 2016. And so I had all these kind of pieces in place to really start going, all right, now we're going to do the thing that we actually really want to do, <laughs> which was to, to support Reiki practitioners. My ideal audience are Reiki practitioners. It's not... Um, not so much the, the people, everyday people who just want, are looking for healing and looking for how to stop their patterns. Like my ideal audience really is Reiki practitioners. That's who I want to serve because I feel like if I can support Reiki practitioners, really be empowered and truly do and live the life that they want to lead, we're all going to be better, right? We're going to have that trickle down effect as I support Reiki practitioners, live out their Reiki dreams then they're going to be supporting their communities and everything's going to be better. So I'm, I'm very much in the position of like, I, I love, I love my community. I love the industry and I want to know how I can support it. How can I help Reiki practitioners? So I have that very unique angle to things because I'm not, I'm not really looking for anyone else. <laughs> right. And so, um, I started out with some really, um, lovely like three month programs at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we've moved into a seven month program and a five month program and just feeling out what works for people, but really getting into looking at what's gonna be the, the pivotal point in someone's spiritual progression to help them in their business. And so really looking at 
Um, cause I can teach everyone the tricks I can, I can teach people the business, but if you haven't fundamentally done the inner work, you're still not going to have the confidence. You're still going to have those limiting beliefs. You're still going to have that little voice in your head saying, no, you can't do this. You're not good enough. Right. And so we want to address that so that when I do teach you the skill sets, oh, things are going to get uh, a little crazy and you're like, things are going to like flow and come into alignment and things are going to work well. And then, and so I just have recognized that over the years of like, okay, <laughs> let's both are important, not just learning the business skills, but we have to do the inner work too. That's great, Christine. Thank you. So what I hear you saying is that we can have all of the tips and tricks in the world, but if we aren't doing the important inner work, then those tips and tricks are, are really only going to take us so far that exactly. we really need to be focusing. Yeah. Okay. So Christine, can you tell us some of the tips and tricks for that inner work and how that can help facilitate um, sending out the, the, the tips and tricks into the world to get them to work for the business? Yeah. And I think for, for me, one of the the lenses I use to see where things are getting stuck is really through the chakras because as Reiki practitioners, most of us are familiar with that, at least ever so slightly. Um, it's incorporated into our training. And so this is how I like to look at it, go where, what emotional flow is happening in each of your chakras. And you can even look at it in your business. If your business was an entity with chakras, where's the flow happening and where is it not? Right. And so if you can look at from the chakra point of view, does your business have a foundation? Right. That's root chakra. Do you have the systems in place? Do you have the, the marketing materials? Do you have the, the, the pieces that need to be done happening? Like that's foundational. Right. And that's also a lot of our own, like personally, do we have limiting money mindset beliefs? right? That's root chakra. If we have fundamental money issues of going, I'm a spiritual pr practitioner and therefore I can't accept money. That's a limiting belief. That's uh, actually a barrier to becoming successful. And so we're looking at those money things at root chakra and what barriers are we putting in our way so that we're actually not going down the path that we want to go down ultimately. And so we look at that and then we can look at sacral chakra and go, okay, this is creativity. This is playfulness. This is childhood wounds might show up here. Okay, let's look at it from that lens. And when we look at it, that lens, it's like, do we have the branding in place? Have we gotten creative? Do we know what our business values are? What's important to us and what sneaky subconscious limiting beliefs are showing up here? Is this our, that I'm not I'm not in flow. I'm, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not like all of those lack of self-esteem is really affecting our sacral chakra and our solar plexus. And so it's like, what's working for us here and what's not and get, getting really clear there. And then we can move up to solar plexus. And this is really about identity is your identity that I'm a, a badass boss, Reiki practitioner, homeschooling mom, whatever it is, like whatever you add after I am, is that statement serving you or is it hindering you? Is it helping you towards your goals or is it not? Are you getting motivated and passionate and purposeful in what you're working? Are you doing this for, because it is your purpose or is it you're doing this because you're supposed to do this next step? And I see, I do see that. I see that people are like, well, I've taken all the classes and so I'm supposed to have a business now. And I'm like, um, <laughs> um, let's pause on that and let's remove the supposed to, or I should, and go, what do you actually, what is your real true desire here? And is that God given? Is that the universe backing you up? Like you have a universal purpose, passion. What is that? What? Do, how can we actually take that and infuse Reiki into it rather than, making Reiki our primary focus, if that's not meant to be our purpose, right? So it's that clarity in solar plexus, right? You see where I'm going? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving this, Christine. This is actually like pure genius. <laughs> and I'm positive that our listeners are really enjoying this as well. You know, the idea of looking at your Reiki business and and, and it, it's chakras, the chakras of the, the Reiki business. I think that's that's actually quite revolutionary and um, wonderful. So I, I love it. And I'm sure that our listeners are too. So thank you. Yeah. And so those, the, the three basic ones are where I typically find the most issues. 
And then as, because most of us, most of us as Reiki practitioners, we got our third eye and crown chakra figured out. You know, we've got the big picture. We've got our guides. We got the spiritual support. And oftentimes Reiki practitioners and other spiritual entrepreneurs as well have a hyper-focused on that area. But we have these underlying limiting beliefs. If we have these underlying self-sabotaging behaviors, if we have this underlying money mindset issue going on that's not supporting us in our business, that's what's going to trip us up, right? And then we come to this, this heart throat chakra center where it's, it's actually asking us to move into action. Like, are we listening to that divine inspiration and taking action steps forward? So even if you have dotted every I and crossed every T and on with all the things you quote unquote are supposed to do in a business and you're still not moving forward, then it's time to turn into heart chakra and going, okay, is the confidence there from solar plexus to share with others about what Reiki is? Are you able to network? Are you, are you comfortable and confident and having the conviction behind you saying, this is what Reiki is. This is my story. I know it changed my life and I know it can change yours too. Are you coming at it with that real clarity in your message and able to share it? Because I, I feel oftentimes people are either doing all of the things and getting that foundation laid, or they're totally up in crown chakra and totally see the big picture. But the, this heart-centered space of having really true relationship building, trustworthy conversations is oftentimes a missing link. Mm, wow, that is really interesting. I want to I wanna ask you more about that, Christine. But, but before we do, I, I want to ask this question first. When it comes to the chakra work, um, what, what, what comes first? Do you work on the chakras first? Or do you put yourself out there with your business and that then indeed helps to heal the chakras? Like which, which comes first? Chicken and the egg kind of question, Christine. <laughs> <Right? laughs> totally. Well, I have a little um, method to my madness. I typically like to start at root chakra and move my way up. So it is really finding what is the foundation in your own personal practice that's going to help you feel inspired, get grounded, and be motivated to do the work, to do the marketing work, to do the things. And so what is the first thing that you do in your day? What is your morning routine? Do you totally skip it? Or are you taking five minutes to meditate, do self-reiki, pull some oracle cards, do a dance party in the shower, whatever it is for you. It's kind of like, what is your activating action to get your chakras moving and in flow? And so really recognizing what the emotional components of the chakras are and touching on those during your day. And so really feeling into like, okay, I'm grounded and now I'm moving into the flow. I'm bringing in some dance. I'm bringing in some creativity. I'm bringing in, okay, I'm getting on Canva and I'm creating my Facebook post, like whatever it is and doing it in a mindset of like, oh, Yes, the universe is supporting me in this time and in this moment. And I've done my, my gratitudes. I've done my meditation, whatever your practice is to bring you into that healthy headspace to do the work, whether that's actual Reiki session or no, nope, I'm going to bust out 10 Reiki posts this week and get them all created and scheduled. And like, that's my sacral chakra work today. So there's, there's a lot of different approaches, but I think that if we just as long as we're not stuck in one, I oftentimes see this, like, which one are, which one is the most resistant? <laughs> like, feel into that. Which ones are the most resistant? Is it sacral chakra? Like, I don't have time for play. That's just a waste of time. Now, that's just another barrier. That's just another limiting belief. Because we create our reality and sacral chakra is all about manifestation. And so if we change the rules of our reality, go, the more I play, the more money I earn. And that's what the new belief I'm subscribing to is, well, guess what? You are now giving yourself permission to go get playful and go get messy and like go play with your kids. And then all of a sudden you are so freaking inspired to show up to do the work. And so it's kind of like, which one has the most resistance and then work, work on it, do that personal development piece so that things can get into flow, that there isn't a block like, oh, I could never you know, talk about Reiki at church, 
or I could never talk about Reiki to this person. Like those are all just limiting beliefs. Like how can we change our dialogue and our internal dialogue to remove our own barriers that we're putting in place to really honor who we are? I am a Reiki practitioner and this is what I do for a living. If there's hesitancy in that, solar plexus, solar plexus, solar plexus. Where, where's the fear coming from? Where's the judgment, the fear of judgment coming from? Is it this lifetime? Is it a past lifetime? Like getting curious and really putting on a lens of curiosity rather than, rather than just trying to skip over it. Like, okay, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. So I'm going to take this approach instead, like get curious. And when we can just get curious with our own stuff and slow down, really slow down and look and journal it out. Like, okay, I didn't want to do that today. And this is why, and just kind of get curious. You can almost release limiting beliefs and those barriers just by putting some light on it, offering it some Reiki, right? And so when we can shine a light on our own shadows, our own darkness, we can either embrace them as like, okay, I can love on this part of myself so much so that it doesn't, it doesn't hold me back any longer. Mm, yes, yes, that is great, Christine. Thank you so much. So talk to us about those those heart-centered conversations, you know, you're mentioning uh, this feeling of, oh, I can't, I can't talk to people at church about Reiki um, and, and how that can really hold us back and the need to, to really, in a sense, own our uh, Reiki business owner status, our Reiki practitioner status. Tell us ab about uh, some ways that we can really venture forth and have those, those heartfelt conversations. Yeah. I think the first step is really to get comfortable with who you are and getting really accepting of who you are. And so if there is any nervousness around, I'm a Reiki practitioner and I'm afraid to tell people that we got to do that work first, right? We got to get really clear of like our identity level of this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. Nothing about that is going to change. And if people are going to love me, they're going to love me. And if they're going to be haters, they're going to be haters. And that is their problem, not mine. Right. So we got We got to do, we got to have that internal conversation going, you know, like if people don't like, like me, that's on them. That's not, that's not me. That's not my problem. I love me. And if I'm not good enough to love for who I am, then they, they're not worthy enough to, to give my time to. So it could be family members, and then it's just having some boundaries put in place. Um, I mean, we all have naysayers. We all have people in our lives. Like, and sometimes it takes them um, a little while to come around. And so we don't necessarily want to do a hard closed door, but at the same time, we don't need to take in their criticism. That's their fear. That's their worry. That's their judgment it has nothing to do with you. This, your passion and purpose was, a, was given to you by divine inspiration, by the universe, by God, whatever you want to call it. And so when you know that, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, then having those conversations and moving into a heart centered place is a lot easier. It's a lot easier to accept help. It's a lot easier to accept love. It's a lot easier to accept support. And it's a lot easier to have those conversations so that when you go to a networking thing, let's say you just go to a regular biz to biz networking event. And of course, you're going to be the only Reiki practitioner there. <laughs> and to really own your truth. This can be really exciting and uh, maybe a bit nerve wracking. But if we can take that nervous energy and turn it into excitement going, here is an opportunity Here's an opportunity for me to share, to get really good at my elevator speech, to really get clear on my pitch. And this is just an opportunity to learn rather than like, I have to make five sales in this two hours, right? When we can, when we can approach it, like I am planting seeds, a no doesn't come then as a rejection. A no is just like, ah, uh, that seed is going to be nurtured and it's going to be watered and spirit's going to shine some light on it and watch. In two weeks, they're going to be calling me. In a month, they're going to be asking for a class. And a year from now, they're going to be wanting more. Like, so it's about approaching people of not getting worried that they're going to say no. 
It's about I'm planting the seeds for success. And when you can approach people with that mindset, then a lot of the fear gets taken away because you're not afraid of rejection. Your intention is to plant the seed. And I did that a lot in the beginning of my business. It wasn't so much about having a full-time practice in the first year. It was like, how many seeds can I plant? How many people can I touch and let them know what Reiki is? And in that way, my second year was really great. And <laughs> my third year was even better. And when I stuck with it and kept doing it and kept showing up and kept having those conversations, people were sharing my information. People kept showing up to the things that I was offering. And I think um, oftentimes we forget that we need to, especially online, we need to actually have conversations with people. Um, oftentimes online, if your main source of income or your main drive is to create a distance Reiki practice, is that online relationships and in-person relationships are two different, two very different things to create and nurture. In, in person, it is so easy to read someone's energy, feel where they're at, have conversations, talk about your pets, and like, all of a sudden you're talking about Reiki and you're, you're booking them a session versus online where you have, there is no body language. There is no, you can't hear the way they're talking. You're, you're, you're too, you're too like mechanical to get there. And so how do we break those barriers down to actually show that we're caring and we're a real person and we're not just a bot, that we're not just a scammer, that we're not just selling something to make money. And so for how I approach people online is really to show them that I care. Like my business is not built on, I need to be a six figure company. It's like, how many people can I impact? How many positive changes can I make? And yes, I'm open to receiving income. And yes, I'm open to that abundance flowing into my life. But first and foremost, I'm here to help people shift and change their lives. So I'm having a, a love-centered conversation of like, I'm really caring. I don't know how many times I've had a, a Facebook messenger chat with someone where I'm giving them advice and telling them the next steps in their business and they go do them and they get the clients. And the next thing I know, they're signing up for a coaching package or they're signing up for a, a certification program I'm offering or whatever it may be. Why? Because I, I helped them. <laughs> I really showed up in that heart-centered way for them when they needed it. Yes. And, and isn't that really the, the core of what all of us are here to do is to love one another in that way, support one another, help one another, spread the power of, of Reiki. And so, you know, truly, I don't think anyone goes into owning a Reiki business without that, that, that heart centered focus. Um, and so that, that is uh, wonderful, Christine. Thank you so much for that. And uh, for, of course, that, that important point that that's really what it's all about is, is helping and, um, um, being there to support others and leading with the heart. So thank you for that. You know, Christine, you, you brought up a, a couple of things that I would really like to maybe ask a, a little bit more about. You know, you said this, this idea of people maybe holding back on talking about their business and that fear of rejection. And I think that this is something that is rather common, not just with Reiki business owners, but with anyone who wants to really do anything in the world and has any kind of a dream, you know, this fear of telling people about it, because almost like if you don't tell people about it and it fails, then no one knows about it. Um, no one knows that you failed. Can you talk to us about that, that fear of putting ourselves out there, talking about our business and uh, making those, those heart centered connections? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, this is kind of like, I, I talk to people often about their upper ceiling limits, their lower level limits of like, where's their comfort zone and moving outside of their comfort zone, stretching a little bit, because to grow, you have to stretch, you have to move out of your comfort zone, right? And oftentimes it comes back to the, the fear of judgment oftentimes comes back to when they were judged as a child, when they were judged in middle school, <laughs> right? 
We have been bullied. We have been picked on. We are the intuitives. We are the star seeds. We are the crystalline children. We are whatever we wanted to, what we discovered in our 20s that, oh, that's what made me so different. But we were really kind of pretty put through the ringer as a child of like the 80s and 90s. Like, I know that's my generation. I think that's probably yours, right? Like, <laughs> So we have, a, we, we, it's, it's steeped in like some real stuff that happened to us, right? Not to mention the layers of past lives that we've had as witches or um, healers of the past and past lives where when they found out of us, we got burned at the stake or hung, hung or beheaded or whatever it was. So there's, there's some real layers to that of why we're afraid of rejection, why we're afraid of judgment. And, and it comes to like, how bad do you want change? <laughs> right. And so it comes to this, like, I know that I'm here for a reason and purpose. And I didn't was, I wasn't given this idea by mistake. This, this is here. I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Like I know, like, I know that I'm here to leave a legacy. I'm here to expand Reiki. I am here to make Reiki a common word. I want it to be in every household across the world. And I'm not going to do that if I don't start with having these conversations. So there's one, there's a couple different ways that you can go about it. One is, yes, you can focus on that vision, the mission, the purpose of your life and let that lead you and go, yeah, this is going to hurt a little bit, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you just, you jump right in, you can move beyond that fear. Then you can, the other good thing to do, especially while you're doing that, is to look at those beliefs, look at those middle school bullying situations and going, what was going on around that? And is the limiting belief around fear, around rejection, does it hold true today? Is that going to be the thing that holds me back from living out my dreams? And I'm pausing on purpose because it's like, we actually need to stop and pause going, okay, yes, I was crying in the, in the middle school bathroom because I was made fun of for just being me. And is it true? Am I inherently flawed? Did God make a mistake on me? No. <laughs> and when we can see how ridiculous it is of going, no, there's nothing actually wrong with me. I was made the way I was made on purpose. And I was a star seed on purpose, or I was a crystalline on purpose, or I was gifted and unique on purpose. I was intuitive on purpose. That wasn't by mistake. I was put here on this earth at this particular time so that I could support others like me. So I could help those previous bullies really in their own spiritual evolution. And I've had clients who literally were bullies and I was doing shamanic guided meditations for them to meet their inner bully and heal them. You know, tables have turned <laughs> when you kind of come into that space. And so, you know, I think it's, we need to shed some light on our past and go, is this the thing that I want to have hold me back? And if it's something that's closer to home, like let's say your spouse doesn't approve. Well, what does that mean? Is that what kind of healthy boundaries can you have in place to go? I'm doing this anyway. This is who I am. And if, and is there, does we, do we need to have larger conversations around that? If one spouse is evolutionarily speaking, progressing faster than the other, you can do that in a healthy way. And, but I see oftentimes a lot of unhealthy ways, right? And how can we really stand on our own two feet that it doesn't matter. We don't need approval from someone else because we have divine's approval. We have our spirit guides approval. We have all of these, our spirit team is supporting us. Do we need approval from anyone else? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is 
Powerful, Christine. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm positive that so many listeners can, that really resonates. I'm positive with, with so many listeners, you know, um, all of those, those challenges, childhood challenges and all of that. So thank you so very much for that, Christine. You know, one thing you said that I found especially powerful was, um, it, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit, you know, being, being yourself, following your dreams, it, it does, it, it hurts a little bit, right? What do you say to that person who is starting out and they're feeling the pain? Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they're feeling it. They're like, yeah, I feel it. It, it. it hurts for sure. What do you say to that person? Those are growing pains. <laughs> like just when we're kids and we get Charlie horses or whatever, they're growing pains. And part of us fully stepping into our purpose and our passion and really embracing who we are, yeah, we're going to have to shed a lot. We're going to have to shed old skins. We're going to have to let go of old beliefs and old relationships that don't serve us. And yeah, it's painful. But when you get to the other side of going, this is who I am, love me or hate me, but this is who I am. Um, you are in a much better position to have a beautiful life, like all the way around. You know, if you're not catering to someone else's beliefs of who you should be. And so know that they're growing pains, know that it is worth it, know that you are spiritually developing um, and that the more you can take care of you. I say all the time, you cannot give from an empty cup, that the first person you should be giving Reiki to is yourself, that daily Reiki is absolutely necessary as a Reiki practitioner. Um, we need to be supporting and making sure that we are giving from a very full place. And so, and it doesn't have to take very long. So often people think that the, a morning routine will take me an hour or two hours. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to. You know, how can we integrate Reiki into your everyday life, right? How can you make your cup of coffee in the morning and give it Reiki? And then while it's brewing, you're doing a dance party to like energize yourself and how can you, when you walk the dog, are you doing the Gokai and chanting those Reiki principles while you're out walking the dog anyway? Like, how can you infuse your life with Reiki rather than like, I have to set aside a specific hour and check all of these boxes to make sure I'm a spiritual person. You know, it's, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, you could try and that's very much the grounded person wants to try. They're like, I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. And I'm going to say, why don't we move into to sacral chakra and get creative and get flexible and see what shows up, see what magic can show up in your life when you're just like, I'm expecting miracles today. And um, let's see what you have to offer. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I'm expecting miracles today and let's see what you have to offer. I mean, what a like mantra for life, right? I mean, just imagine if we approached every day in that way and how magical our our days would be. So thanks for that, Christine. That's, that's really great. <laughs> I love it. I mean, why not? Why not? If we are scripting, if the words that we're projecting, if the energy that we're projecting, if are all creating our reality, and this is what I believe. We need to watch our thoughts. We need to watch our words. We need to watch our actions and going, is this supporting me as I move towards my goal or is this holding me back? So if I keep telling myself I'm not good enough to do this, well, guess what? Now the universe is going to create that reality and you're not going to have the clients that you want. Versus like, I know, like, I know, like, I know that I'm here for reason and purpose, doing what I'm doing at the stage that I'm at, and I'm going to get the clients that are going to match that, and they're going to have shifts, and I'm going to be the conduit to help them get there. A uh, way different perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it very much seems to me, Christine, you know, what, what you're saying is that oftentimes when we experience challenges in our business, like with getting clients or putting ourselves out there, the, the problem isn't there. It's deeper than that. And yeah. we need to get down deeper to heal that part in order to then be able to move forward in our business. So what it sounds to me you're saying is that the problem isn't really the problem. Exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> we all think it comes down to numbers, right? How many clients do I have? How much money can I make? What's my rent going to cost? Like, and yes, those are business things that we need to be aware of. But oftentimes the person who is absolutely hyper-focused on business and all the business things, and they've turned off the light on their their family relationships and their fun and play and their sexuality and all the other aspects of what makes up you. And you're just hyper-focusing on that one little piece of it. Uh, that's, it's, it's gotta go deeper. It's gotta go deeper. And so I often um, use the life balance wheel going, where are you focusing? I have created clients by focusing hyper-focused on fun and play. I have created clients by hyper-focusing on sexuality. I have created clients by hyper-focusing on um, my family or my health and wellness, right? And when we can, when we hyper-focus on a different wheel, a different piece of the pie, if you will, then all of it expands. Because the thing to grow your business is you need to be in a state of expansion. If you're in a state of fear, you're in contraction. So am I contracting because I'm looking at the numbers all day or am I stepping into a state of expansion of going, yeah, I'm open to that. Oh, that would be curious. I wonder um, how that's going to turn out. And just getting curious and being in an expansive state, then, then the clients are going to, are going to be feeling into that energy of you in a state of expansion. So it's not about the hustle. It's about being in alignment. And I see so many spiritual entrepreneurs in that hustle state, rather being in a line state. And what kind of conversations are you having in a hustle state versus a line state? Like I go back to selling is serving, right? So if I know that my, what I offer does these fundamental shifts in people's lives where they are able to, to hit their goals, they're able to hit their, the numbers, but they're also shifting in their relationships and they're having more fun and they're able to bring more health and wellness into their life. If, if it's more balanced, that's alignment. When the chakras are more aligned, that's balance, that's expansion. And so watching where you're at, am I contracting right now or am I expanding? And if, if the answer is contracting, then you need to work on you. Even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, and change your state of being so that you're in a state of expansion, because whatever you do in a state of expansion is going to expand. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. That's awesome. Christine, thank you so much for that. Um, what, what I really heard in all of that was just this idea of expansion, even in terms of like, you know, with you applying, uh, the, the creativity and the sexuality and all of that, almost as if there, there are an infinite number of ways to get clients and to not limit ourselves to certain particular tactics, but rather taking that expansive view of ourselves, our business, and ways to connect with people and serve them. Yes, yes, yes. And I think, um, I think that's huge. I don't think everyone has that perspective. Oftentimes when you come to a business class, it's like, well, there's one way to do it, or you need to do these five steps. This is my guaranteed program. If you follow these five steps, you're going to have this much money at the end of the month. And I challenge that model. I challenge that model. I think it, for such a spiritually diverse community as the Reiki community, we don't have to fit into a box. We need to do what works for us. And every Reiki practice doesn't need to be a cookie cutter model of, the, of our masters, right? I am open and flexible to having things be different and that your uniqueness of who you are is what's going to attract those new clients in. So if you're in a state of expansion and let's say you are, um, you, you have this underlying affirmation that the more you exercise, the more clients you have, like it can be anything, like it really can. And every time you go exercise, you're like, you're, you're doing your weights and you're like, yeah, I'm going to get five new clients this week. And that's what your mantra is while you're, you're sweating and you're releasing and you're letting go and you're getting clear. 
that energy. And then you're, then you go show up at, a, at on a live after that, you've got your headband on or whatever. And, and you're like, yeah, I just did a Reiki workout, a manifesting workout. And I, you know, like you're going to come in a state of expansion. So, and you're going to get the clients that are wanting to do workouts with Reiki. And we need more of that. We need more of everything, right? Like we're unique. Let's own our uniqueness and not necessarily have to be like the next Reiki practitioner over. Like I, I really don't like comparatitis where we're comparing ourselves to our Reiki masters, to the industry, to whatever, and going, no, no, no. How are you going to show up in your own unique way and your own unique gifts? Because we're all different and that is okay. It's okay. So I'm all about, let's get rid of the cookie cutter model and let's do it our own way with our own unique passions and then yeah, go work out and have a Reiki class working out. Like it's all good. <laughs> I love this, Christine, because you know, to me, this approach very much is a Reiki approach. You know, Reiki is so flexible. We as practitioners know that we can use Reiki in all kinds of ways and Reiki can do all kinds of things. So why limit ourselves? Reiki doesn't limit us. So why limit ourselves with our business? I love it. That is awesome. Exactly. I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So, so Christine, um, you know, we could talk to you all day. You are a wealth of knowledge. You've got a lot to say. Um, and I'm positive that our listeners have just really enjoyed uh, hearing from you and your perspectives. Um, I want to ask you a couple more questions. I want to ask, number one, is there anything that you would really like to pass along to listeners and really let them know about? And also, how do they get in touch with you? How do they follow you um, and, uh, and get to know you better and, and how you support Reiki business owners? Absolutely. Well, know that my handle is at Reiki Cafe University. You can find me on all the major channels, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or um, YouTube or like I'm on quite a bit of them. We have a podcast called Reiki Cafe Radio. I would say about a quarter of, quarter of them are on business. So there's more of that. Um, if you join our Facebook group, Reiki Cafe Community, when you join us, um, you'll be asked if you want to join us for an eight-day chakra foundation activation series. And that's what I'm talking about in the beginning of our conversation about those are the big three that if we haven't focused on, we need to. That's going to give you some really juicy material and activating actions to really help waken those lower chakras up. So that's a free resource that we have. Um, we often offer webinars and all kinds of supportive things in the Reiki Cafe community. So you're welcome to join us over there. Um, and then we have we have our Beginner's Guide to Gain New Reiki Clients. It's a $35 program course that you are welcome to. We have our Reiki Cafe Homeroom. I love the Homeroom because it's a monthly subscription membership where you get two calls a month as well as a Facebook Messenger chat where you can ask questions. So it doesn't matter where you are in your journey or where you are in your business development. It's a really safe place to ask questions, to support one another, and to grow. And so um, those are just a few of the things. But we have a Reiki and Manifesting Abundance course. Oh, it's so juicy. So if you know that limiting beliefs are your issue, uh, that would be the course to take. We will bust right through those. So check out, I mean, Reiki Cafe University has three colleges within it. And one of them is called the College of Business. And so uh, like me, I'm assuming most Reiki practitioners haven't had an actual business training. And so that is like your home for Reiki specific business training. And then there's a lot of ways to um, reach out, find support so that you're getting the next steps. And so I do offer consultations, coaching, all of that as well. And it's really meant to go to really launch you to the next step of your business. Find out where those weak links are in in your chakras are, what limiting beliefs are holding you back so that we can rewire and recode and get you on your way to filling your Reiki dreams, because that's what I'm all about. <laughs> that's what I'm all about. Let's just 
uh, touch every everyone in this in in a way so that they can know that they're worthy of it. You're worthy of your Reiki dream. So let's do it. Let's do it together. Wonderful. That is beautiful, Christine. Thank you so very much. I want to just say that I am honored to have you on Reiki Business Collective. So glad to be able to chat with you. I know that this has been a really helpful, beneficial conversation that I'm sure people will listen to again and again. So I just want to say thank you and send you blessings for your Reiki journey. Oh, and you as well. Like, I'm super excited that you've got the Reiki Business Collective going because it's so needed in the Reiki industry. And so, yeah, wishing you a ton of success in your own Reiki business journey. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Sending you blessings and best wishes for your Reiki journey. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, share, and join in the conversation at facebook.com slash groups slash Reiki Biz, B-I-Z. Blessings and best wishes for your Reiki journey.